Okay, so in this next part of the webinar, I really wanted to get to some of the features of RenderWorks and where they show up. Um, I'm going to do that through showing you around another project and we'll get into the actual tools themselves. So just really just touching on something on the front cover to begin with. You see that I've got an image here and this is really just a bitmap image. And all I've done is copied and pasted as a bitmap my uh, viewport which was exploded in this particular view. So there is a command called paste as bitmap. So if you select the viewport, copy it, then when you paste, you can paste it as a bitmap. And that's quite nice because then what we can do is we can apply the image effects. And image effects is one of those lovely little features that's really easy and rapid to do. Now you can actually do this directly to a viewport, but it also works beautifully on a, just a photograph or an image, which is what I'm doing here. And the great thing with image effects, um, it's a bit like a, a mini version of sort of Photoshop um, editing directly inside your software. So you see, kind of look at the preview there, you can kind of slide around the brightness and the contrast and so on. Uh, obviously all I've done here is, is change the saturation. So let's kind of tone it down somewhere in between. Let's go for a bit of a sepia look. And I'm slightly going to soften the edges as well. I'll click apply. And you see it's a really nice way just to get um, a, a sort of dynamic range of different sort of image based effects. Both on the images that you've imported and your viewports as well. So let's just take a second. Yeah, that's looking good. You can see that's kind of cool. So that's definitely something I recommend for things like front covers and so on as well. Okay, so let's get into how we use RenderWorks a bit more. So you can see that all of these drawings here have been generated from my Vectorworks model. And they do look like just regular normal plans. So if I double click into this particular one, I'll double click and I'm going to navigate back through the viewport to the design layer. And let's go back to our ground floor plan. And the first thing I'd like to show you is the RenderWorks camera. So a lot of people using VectorWorks, if they've never used 3D in VectorWorks or you know anything like that, they'll be wondering where all the RenderWorks stuff shows up. So what I would like you to do is have a look at the, um, not just the 3D modeling tools, this is where I actually create the models, but most of the rendering tools are gonna be under the visualization palette. So if I actually drop that off there. Um, you're also gonna find that RenderWorks will crop up under the view rendering menu. This is where you can access all the different rendering modes, including things like um, batch rendering as well. So a lot of people wouldn't realize that Vectorworks has batch rendering built in. It also shows up over here. Um, and a good tip for you here would be to click on this uh, little arrow here and just make sure you've got render mode long on. Let me turn that off for a second. You can see you only really get um, a very short arrow, render mode short there, this tiny icon here. So I recommend you turn on render mode long then you get the nice big drop down with all the settings in. So this is where we'll kind of play around with some of the settings you saw in the previous uh, demonstration earlier. Um, where else does RenderWorks show up? Well, the main area it really shows up is under the Render tab. Those are the sort of three classic places. So we're going to explore some of these things together. But I really just want to show you how simple it is to put a camera into your drawing. So I'm going to go to the uh, camera icon here. Let's say I would like a nice view, maybe from the living room looking into the kitchen area. All I do is I click and aim my camera and then you'll see the RenderWorks camera pops up. I can move it around in terms of its cone of vision if I want to increase that slightly and change the target point. That's kind of nice, so let's undo that. And basically let's double click to activate that particular camera view. So what that will do is basically set me into the camera view. Now I'm gonna go up to OpenGL, which is the graphics card rendering. And let's just kind of render that up for a second. You'll notice that the rendering is pretty fast. And of course, at the moment, I've got my um, first floor off. Let's just go along. Let's go to my little, or should we say, put that layer on. So now let's have a little walk around the design. So we've used our camera to place ourselves into the model. Let's have a look at the uh, walkthrough tool. And this is a really nice little tool for kind of slowly walking through and exploring. It's going a little bit more jumpy than normally it would, and that's because um, of my sort of video moment. But you can see you get a pretty good impression. So that's kind of a really nice way to use the camera. Um, you've got some other controls here, like the pan around. So that's the equivalent to sort of panning your view around or moving your head. Then you've got the move up and down. And of course, you've got this one, which is the gaming keys. Uh, so if you're a computer gamer, you'll know, you know, the WASDA keys for moving around. 
So that means I can sort of slowly move around left and right and so on as well. So that's really kind of fun. I do quite like the gaming keys myself. I, I think they're really nice. So when I'm ready, um, if I want to capture this particular view, I could do view, create viewport. And let's go ahead and do that. And when you do actually um, create a viewport from a camera, because I've got my RenderWitz camera still activated, you get the opportunity to link it. So that means if the camera's moved, the viewport will update. Uh, sometimes I don't want to do that because I want to leave my cameras in the same place. But let's go for it. Let's link that camera through. That means the camera will disappear. We'll click OK. And we'll go and create a new sheet layer. So let's do number sheet number 12. Let's call this kitchen. We'll click OK. And of course, the real key with setting up your renders, if you do want decent quality rendering, make sure you're kind of at the level of quality, something to 150 to 300. But as I say, my advice is you don't want to go too high too soon. And we'll just click OK. Let's just put that onto the viewport. And when we're ready, we can click Update. By the way, we have got some what I call planar objects in the viewport. Here. These are 2D things. So if you don't want to display those, just turn those off. Uh, before you click update. So let's just update that viewport. Because it's on a sheet layer now and it's rendering at 150 dots per inch, it will take a bit longer than um, the active sort of OpenGL rendering in the view. Sorry, that's because I'm on wireframe. Let's pop it onto OpenGL. Let's click update. You'll see how fast it is. Uh, should only take a second or two. We've got the geometry processing down here. So yeah, it's okay. It's sort of fairly low quality. There's no lighting, shadows or anything else. I think the only thing we've actually got working in there is something I've talked about a bit before is the ambient occlusion, where you get these sort of slightly soft shadows and things going on in there as well. Okay, so that's cool. Um, if I did want to apply the image effects, I'll just show you quickly image effects. Click on the option. And let's have a look at how we can kind of maybe, let's change the saturation. Um, and again, let's just sort of soften the edges a little bit there. So you can see it's really easy to apply. So that's quite nice just for a very sort of early stage sketchy view from my camera. So let's go back to our design layer and let's look at a few other aspects. So I'm gonna to click to top view. Let's go back out. Uh, let's have a quick look in 3D. By the way, I've got a nice little um, addition to my workspace where I've added in all the things like the 3D views here and also the rendering styles as well. So it just makes it nice and easy um, in my enhanced workspace to kind of spin around the design. Let's activate the roof layer now. Okay, so what's the first few tools you learn for RenderWorks? Well, you've got to learn flying around in 3D. So it's the fly around tool, this one. Uh, the shortcut for that is Shift and C, and that's very straightforward, it enables us, that's pretty cool. You can also activate it with Control and the middle button of a decent three button mouse. Okay, and the lovely thing with that is you can actually kind of stay in whatever rendering tool you're in. Um, so that's particularly nice. So you can see it's quite a nice little design. Um, just a kind of tiny word on the organization, you can pretty much see it's very straightforwardly organized. I've got a roof layer with the roof deck there. I've got a first floor layer. Um, so that's pretty straightforward. And I've also got a site layer as well. So just turn that off as well, just to strip it right back. Okay, so let's look at uh, how we use RenderWorks to apply some materials. Um, so if we've got a really straightforward material like this item here, so this is literally just a slab. So this is a case of simply doing it through texture. And that is probably the fastest way. It doesn't mean it's the best way but it means that it's the quickest way to actually apply a material. So if I wanted to swap that material out, I could go into my resource manager for a second. Um, I don't really want to use these, these are 2D. By the way, you can see I've got my 2D libraries here all organized in my favorites. So these are my favorite files here. Let's open this up. Um, let's go for my 3D textures. And this is actually the little file that um, I was gonna share with everybody who is attending the webinar. This is the sample of my 3D materials. You can see it's quite nicely organized. So if I wanted this asphalt, for example, I can double click to apply and you can see it's quite rapid. Just simple double click really. What else have we got in there? Let's go for some stone maybe. Let's try that one out, uh, double click. You can see really, really rapid. So this is the technique I would recommend to try when you're actually designing um, because it's super fast and super rapid, uh, but it isn't always the best way. I quite like, quite like that with a bit of wooden decking. So you can see that's really straightforward. 
Okay, so let's have a look at um, how we modify materials in some of the parametric objects. You can see I've got a couple of types of wall here. So let's say I would like to change this blue brick on this particular wall. I can click Edit Style for the wall, go into the wall style itself. Um, at the moment, I've got this brick component here. So let's double click and see what's happening. Um, and you can see that I've actually just applied the texture straight onto the component of the wall. So if I want to swap that out, all I need to do is click onto my texture and let's see if we can swap that out for a different type of brick. Um, I'm going to go into my sample materials. Let's go for that one. Now, because I've done it on the wall style, you should expect to see that will propagate itself right through all the walls. So it's just about to replace them. Uh, we're not changing the thickness, but let's just kind of get into the good habit of right side, right side. And we are going to replace the textures. So we'll click OK. And quite rapidly, you should see all of these blue brick walls, which I actually really like, change to a different type of red. So that's how we kind of do it for those kind of elements. The other way to do it is through um, component classes. Um, so, for example, on this particular object, if we click Edit Style, let's have a quick look at the uh, brick. Yeah, okay, I can see why I did it because I've got the same wall type with two different classes. So if I'd done it with class, then all of the walls would change. So let's just go ahead and see what would happen if I do class texture. So at the moment, that means uh, this particular class will be the thing that gives the walls their texture. So when I click OK, I'd probably expect those walls to change maybe to blank at the moment. Let's have a quick look. Just click OK and this dialog will disappear. Okay, so they've now gone uh, blank uh, or white if you like because there's no texture being applied. So if I simply go down to my wall, external finish and I right click and edit it this way. So always remember to tick use it creation, go to textures and then basically object and component textures, which is this brick component here. Let's kind of load in a different type of material. Um, so I think I'm going to go for, I'm just keen, interested to try something really different. Let's go for this kind of metal cladding. So I'll double click, that will go into that particular component. And when I click OK, you should see, because it's taking its um, materiality through class, that has applied to everything of that class through the project. So that's quite interesting. So that's a really sort of nice thing that you can do through classes. Now, I just want to show you something that's really, really cool with um, how you can actually edit class overrides to get different options. So I'm just going to open up another file for a second. So here you can see the project, and this is for um, a rear extension for a little bungalow. And you can see what I did here was um, four different options for the client at the early design stages. Um, the standard sort of brick, you know, matching into the existing. Um, and then a really kind of nice few different options using um, rather contemporary Western Red Cedar or, you know, a really cool kind of black stained, uh, maybe larch cladding or something. And then maybe a zinc option. So the way this worked was um, I basically had my walls and what I did, I applied to the outer skin a class. OK, so if I click onto this particular viewport, you'll see that I've also got a class that I can go into. And if I scroll down, it's timber cladding. OK, so this was an extracted surface and I could turn it. If I turned it off, I'd just go back to the brick. But when I turn on the timber cladding, you can see at the moment I've got a tiny little icon here, which means that I've edited the class. So what I've done is I've overridden the class graphics in that particular viewport with black cladding. So if I wanted to, without changing the actual vector its model, by editing the class overrides, I could go through and choose a completely different type of option. Uh, let's go for this kind of brick. This is a very different kind of colored brick, I think. Yeah, let's go for that one, actually. Double click, I'll click OK, and you won't see anything until I've updated, um, but just watch carefully. When I click Update, it will kind of take a moment to, to render as well. And what's happening is that outer component, which is kind of like a, an extruded shape on front of the brick. Essentially, it's in a class and that class has now been overridden to give me a different material option there. So this is absolutely fantastic for overrides. And you can see on this one, all I've really done, exactly the same thing. Click onto classes. And if I did pop down into the timber cladding there, 
can't change the name but it doesn't matter about that you can see I've just got some zinc cladding on that particular one so I think that's a really nice feature for options and obviously you can use that for internal uh, views as well for different sort of finishes and materials in your models good okay so let's click back onto our project and let's carry on um, so we got to the proposed plans and I was showing you about the cameras and so on as well. Just really wanted to show you a little trick here with the um, elevations. Um, so these are really just really straightforward open gel rendering with drawn edges and I've got um, heliodon and some ambient occlusion. So the way this works is if I double click into this particular viewport, you'll notice I've actually got a little bit of annotation. And if I just select everything and strip it away, Command X, you see, I've only here, I've just got the basic rendering. So that's quite a neat little tip. If you do have contextual uh, settings and buildings next door and maybe slopey ground, that sort of thing, you can actually just draw that in, in the view player. So definitely bear that in mind when there's either things you can't model or something else. So use the rendering as a background and then draw in the side context. Then I want to show you um, on these particular elevations how I've achieved this nice sort of rendered look on everything. Um, so here I've gone for OpenGL rendering, but I've turned off the edges and I've got a much sort of softer um, option here. So I'm just going to click on my visibility tool. Let's hide this particular viewport so you can see those elevations properly. You can see you get a much more realistic look, um, much sort of softer in terms of sort of how that actually looks on the drawing. So that's a nice little setting. Um, and here is a great little tool that if you haven't used it, nothing to do with RenderWorks, but it's the Callout tool. And you can see I've used this just to do my little key of annotation here. So that's kind of cool. Um, let's have a quick look onto my 3D views. And these are the um, exploded views that I love to do. Now the way this works is really, really simple. Let me just generate one from scratch to show you how it works. So I'll pull off a copy of that bottom one. All I need to do um, is copy the viewport up a little bit, click onto layers, and I simply swap out what the layer is showing so that I can now swap to my first floor. I click update, zoom in a bit here, click update. That'll obviously show the first floor of the model. Because I've modeled in three different layers, a ground floor, a first floor and a roof, it's very straightforward to show nice exploded views of your of your project. But it's really kind of straightforward. It's just the basic OpenGL rendering. Uh, obviously got a plane in there, so I could send that to the back as well. So that's pretty cool. You just repeat the same process with the roof as well. Excellent. Let's have a quick look at some of the sections I produced on this particular project. Um, and neat little trick. These are basically um, just, you know, straightforward OpenGL with this time with a little bit of difference, I've got hidden line as a foreground rendering. So what that does, it gives me quite crisp, you'll see edges. So more of a sort of constructional type drawing. Uh, it looks like I've got a little bit of sketch on. Yes, I have a little bit my own sort of sketch style in there. And that's the other really nice thing. You can kind of play around with this sort of sketchiness style. Let's make it a little bit more extreme. So perhaps you'll, you'll notice that when I click OK, you'll see yeah, you can just about see the sketchiness has gone a little bit more, bit more wacky now. So the sketch rendering built into VectorWorks is great, not just for 2D plans, um, but actually for your 3D viewports as well. Here, um, I've just got a section, but I've just gone for OpenGL. And because I've got a Heliodon in there, I've just got, you know, shadows basically showing through. Let's finish off with a quick animation of the full project.